full name as registered is Narahim Pitagay Kumudu Priyanga De Costa. <laughs> but in the trust, most people know me as Kumi De Costa. As a cardiac nurse in London, you have three options to go to, which is Gosh, Evelina, or here. And when you're a cardiac nurse and you're hooked, it is all you want to do. And those two other hospitals are like juggernauts. I mean, there is so much experience available in those two places. However, what they didn't have, in my opinion, with my interactions and, and the placements I've done or whatever, is they were more like business model driven. Okay. Whereas the Brompton gave me the time to do what I wanted to do for my patient and mainly for my parents, really, because that was my thing. I wasn't a technically oriented nurse. I was all about the patients and the parents mostly because our the patient is usually a baby and they're usually sedated. So the interaction in the patient's experience is the experience that the parents have. I was always really, really focused on giving them the right information. Are they comfortable? I can only imagine how horrendous it must be to have gone through a pregnancy thinking that you were going to have a normal baby and then suddenly you give birth to a beautiful, normal, completely intact baby and then suddenly somebody whisks the child away and says, I'm sorry, he's got a terrible heart condition, you're now going to be whisked off to another hospital. And sometimes the mother is still in stirrups. Father's having to kind of negotiate about open heart surgery and consenting and potential side effects and potential numbers of death and all this kind of stuff and how people absorb that they still stand there I still to this day don't know but they all do I don't know how when I eventually had my own child and that child got sick and I had to go to Chelsea and Westminster with him almost all of what I believed about the Brompton was true honestly what a world away the nursing care was in terrible they did everything that the child needed but that personal touch was not there if you god forbid forgotten your nappies for your child well i'm sorry you need to go off and buy the nappies at the brompton freely available because the philosophy is that they, they didn't want you to worry about such minutia when your child was going through such a thing this is so rare and it continues to this day. I hope it never changes because that's why we have such high patient parent satisfaction, I guess. And then they don't realize it sometimes when they first arrive here and this is the only place they know. Of course there's levels of idiosyncrasies within a system, so they will start complaining until they get sent to a very proficient, perfectly capable another hospital who do the right things by their child and yet they don't have as good an experience as they do here because of that the time allowed, the engagement that they have with the nursing team and all of that. The Brompton allows me to do my job the way I like to do it, which is time to speak to parents, time to sit with them and hold their hand, time to listen to them. There's other people that are available I can refer them to if I cannot do what they need from me and I didn't want to lose that. And is there any particular story you remember about patients? When I first came to the trust, uh, about three months in, 12-year-old boy that had collapsed and come in, had his chest open for many, many days. So many people had to go in his chest with their hands in there, having to resuscitate this child many times. And as a very junior person, having never seen that, you're standing there, well, what are you doing? Why don't you let him die in dignity? And then the child recovers, eventually goes home many, many months later. However, a year later, when he came for his outpatient appointment, he walked through the corridor and I was just like, thank God you're not the ones making those decisions because there he is. He came in a wheelchair, he stopped the wheelchair, he just walked into the unit and I was just flabbergasted. Mm. It was amazing. So that was a real, like, oh my God moment. How and does it feel to talk about all these things? Amazing. Amazing. So privileged. Honestly, you, it is not just one of those things you say, but you feel so privileged to be allowed to be such an important part. Mm -hmm. 
in those people's lives at that time. And if I feel like I have made even the slightest difference in that journey, I feel so satisfied. And the fact that it, this institution allowed me to do it in that way was why I stayed for as long as I did. As a closing question, what is your general thought about the NHS? I'm fiercely protective of it. I am obviously a visitor that have made a life in England for myself, mm -hmm. coming from a different country. Mm -hmm. um, I, we also have an NHS system in Sri Lanka, which is where I was born. Um, I'm fiercely protective of it, but I understand that there are certain things that we have to adjust in order to keep it in that way. Mm -hmm. Personally, I would be happily ready to contribute extra on my <laughs> national insurance if I thought that the NHS could remain free at point of care. Mm -hmm. One of our doctors, Dr. Reddington, came to do a lecture. He was um, our intensivist at the ICU. He worked, he worked in Canada yeah. um, and then now he works in the States. He was saying that he has a budget of like a small country to do this research. However, he knows that children still die a mile down the road from diarrhea and vomiting, which would never happen in England. Yeah. And for that alone, we should protect it because it's so precious.